He said this, she said that, Republicans are for this, and Democrats are for that. But where's the compromise? For the next few minutes, we'll discuss the great partisan divide. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum, and I'm joined by Democratic strategist Doug Thornell and Republican strategist John Fury. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Great to be with you. You know, it seems like over and over and over again when we turn on the television set, we open up our tablets and so forth, or power up our tablets, we're constantly hearing about the Republicans are against this, the Democrats are for that, and vice versa. It seems like more and more we're shouting at each other as opposed to listening to each other. John, what is the problem, assuming that you agree with my thesis? Well, it's a big country, and I think that uh, <laughs> there's a lot of different opinions, and I think that there's an increasing divide between the red part of America and the blue part. I think the big cities have a different outlook than the rural parts of the country, and I think that that is really kind of reflected in the partisanship. You know, you have uh, on, on all, almost, for example, on the gun debate. I mean, really, it's a Venus, a Venus and Mars kind of situation where people are saying one thing in the cities and a completely different thing in the country. And, and, and because it's such a big country and with sharp regional differences, you're going to have sharp debates. But, but here's my challenge with that, and Doug, chime in here. We've always been a big country. We've always been a diverse country. Yeah. What, what, it seems like to me that the temperature here in this town has, has risen or, or has gotten yeah. higher and much more personal. Do you, do you agree with a, that? I think it's exaggerated in Congress, okay. meaning that it's definitely a, the, the, the way that the House is broken down now because of gerrymandering and, the, and redistricting. You have the Republicans who are much more conservative than they have been in the past and, Republic, and Democrats who are more to the left than they have in the past. Four, six, eight years ago when John and I may have been working over there, you had blue dog Democrats who were more conservative and then you had some moderate Republicans who were in the Northeast and they were able to work together a little bit more and that doesn't exist much anymore. So for our viewers at home that are watching this program, they're probably thinking of this question, I'm going to ask it on their behalf, what is the solution? How can Republicans and Democrats from, that are from different parts of the country that very well may have uh, differences of opinion, how can they get together? Because look, when I grew up in, in high school, in, in civics class, it was, you know what, you are a federal legislator, clearly you represent your constituents, but when you get to Washington, you got to compromise here. John? <laughs> well, I, don't th I think what you have to do is have a decisive election, which gives one side the chance to govern over the other. You know, the fact of the matter is that, uh, that the media culture that we grow, we have now makes it awfully hard to, to get compromised because people have a vested interest in being as, as radical as possible because it actually it helps them with fundraising, it helps them get notoriety, and it, it helps them for a variety of reasons. And leadership, if you look on both sides, is not nearly as strong as it once was. The, the party structures are much weaker, and you have a lot of uh, independent actors who get you know, a lot of energy out of being contrary, not only with the other side, but with their own party. And there's, there's also, I mean, the personal relationships that used to exist in Congress maybe 10, 20 years ago don't exist anymore. These people don't really even know each other. I mean, you talk to members in leadership, you, 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 you give them a rank and file name, and they don't know each other. There are 80 new members in Congress in the House right now. And I think one of the things is they spend a lot of time at home now. I get why the Republicans are doing that in the House. But that means that they're not interacting socially, and I think that makes a difference. We have well, there's no trust. Well, Very quickly, well, one John. other thing is that the rise of the outside interest groups and where the money comes from. The money doesn't go to the members who cut deals. The the money goes to people who are who are the most passionate on their behalf. And this uh, the, the money part of this equation makes it very, very difficult for people to come together. And to Doug's point, they don't know each other, and they have to know each other if they want to cut deals. What, they, what they're doing is negotiating against caricatures, and it's awfully hard to do that. So many of them are worried about uh, primaries that it's hard to work across the aisle. We've got about 10 seconds. Very quickly, yes or no, does the president play a role in, in terms of bringing both sides together? Yes or no? I think he absolutely does. He should. John. He should, but it's going to be awfully hard for him. All right, Doug Thornell and John Fury, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks a lot. And, of course, thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.